Hello, all you crypto enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel today. I got some great clips. There was a, a session with the Bank of England, Sir Governor, Sir John Cutliffe on faster, cheaper cross-border payments. I got some great clips we're going to go through today. We'll play them and I'll stop and give my two cents, my analysis. I guess that's why you're here. That's why you watch this channel. Let's get into the information. This is from 801 XRP. This guy posts a lot of great content. Please go give him a follow if you want to stay up on faster payments, XRP stuff. He's great. He posts a lot of solid stuff. So it says, fam, deputy governor of Bank of England, Sir Jean Cutliffe on faster, cheaper cross-border payments. It may be one payment solution, one life form in a dominant and others disappear, right? So they're saying there's going, there could be one giant one that takes over a good source of the payments infrastructure, like how Swift is doing currently and others, smaller ones might not make it, but let's get into what he's saying here and let's talk about it. But the effect is very much the same. And we're witnessing a proliferation of what you might call payment life forms. We don't know which ones are going to survive. We don't know which ones are not. And of course, we don't know how they will live with each other afterwards. With each other afterwards, interoperability is a big key term that is used in the ecosystem, but it's so important, right? It's not only thing to make a payment system, but what, how does that inter payment system interact with other payment systems and how frictionless is that process? If I turn and try and look at wholesale CBDC through that lens, actually, strictly speaking, wholesale CBDC exists at present because settlement, wholesale settlement in central bank money, I think is digital, just about, is just about everywhere. And central banks, of course, are working on the future of those existing digital wholesale payment systems through upgrading their RTGS and other infrastructure. But I think what we're talking about here are newer tokenized forms of wholesale CBDC, and they're starting to emerge those life forms, at least in experimentation, experimental form. And they may offer a great deal in terms of improving the speed, reliability and functionality of payments. They may make a big difference, potentially, depending how they're designed to full 24-7 operation and seamless transaction to enabling broader access to settlement and to creating kind of interoperability between different wholesale payment systems. And of course, those are improvements we're trying to get for the existing way but wholesale CBDC may offer just a much more effective way of doing that with the prospect of greater functionality, things like atomic payments and smart contracts. So how do we fit that into the G20 roadmap for improving cross-border payments? The roadmap, first thing to say, is it aims to be comprehensive and it addresses a large number of very different areas. But at its centre, three of those areas relate to the challenges posed both in the public and the private sector by legacy technologies, and they, that require significant investment if we're going to change them. At the centre is the use of truncated and very fragmented data formats, and then the problems that arise from long transaction chains. And I think it's in those areas that this sort of technological development. So when you talk about long transaction chains, sometimes when you're sending a payment across the world and you're using the current infrastructure of the SWIFT system, when you're sending a payment, let's say from California to China. If your bank doesn't have a direct payment rail to a bank in China that, you know, directly, it might have to go through several other banks to get to its final destination. And each bank will take a little piece and send it. And it does take quite some time. That's why it could take three, four, five, seven days, maybe even longer in some situations to send a payment. And that's really not a working infrastructure for the foreseeable future. Inflation is rabid all, all over the world. I think in like Venezuela or was it Venezuela? Could be Venezuela. I, I noticed it was like 200% from when all of this started and that just eats away at pretty much everything people are doing. And they have so much money. Is it Argentina? God, is going to, it's one of the South American countries if it's not Argentina, but they are dealing with such a problem. They have too many banknotes in, in, in banks. They don't have anywhere to store it because it's useless. Basically it's a use, useless payment system because it has no really value anymore because they have so much printing and so much abuse in the system. US and other countries, Japan, are following suit with similar issues in inflation. You print a bunch of money, it has to have, there are some consequences to that. Let's finish this off. Whether it's wholesale CBDC, whether it's stable coins, whether it's new payment platforms, the some are proposed could offer solutions. And the roadmap therefore includes precisely work on these new areas to see what they could offer and how they should be integrated. That work is led by the BIS Innovation Hub and the CPMI, and actually Cecilia is leading that work within the CPMI. We're hoping that in that way, the roadmap can be flexible. It may be that one payment solution, one 
life form becomes dominant and everything else disappears. But it's certainly probable that new things will emerge and the roadmap will have to change. It will have to adapt and some things will become more important, some less important. And we hope we've designed it in a way that over time it can be flexible and adjust, looking to the future at the same time as we try and improve the present. And I'll just briefly add a couple of very important points around that. The first is there are elements of the roadmap that will be important to all forms of payment, no matter what the technological development. We can get greater consistency in the application of compliance around things like illicit finance. If we can get more harmonization and agreement around how to apply data, data regulation, just lining up regulation generally, I think, is going to make a difference on cross-border payments, no matter what technology you're operating through or over which rails your payment is traveling. And it... All right. And then I got another clip here too. similar. It's the same meeting. This is Cecilia Skinsley, the head of the BIS Innovation Hub. Guys, if you don't know what the BIS is, BIS is basically the central banks for central banks. They are the ones who usually set policy for other central banks and help out with the C experiments. So the BIS Innovation Hub is really like a think tank. They are, they are working on different payment solutions that central banks can adopt. They are working on a ton of stuff. I cover all of this in my Sensei chats with my community community guys so much is going on check this out this is tomorrow's chat we're going to get into the euro payment system the eurozone payment system i want to talk about what all this is and the migration there's just so much information here guys that i'm going to go over with the community and look at all this all of this is information that they are going to get tomorrow and so they they know exactly what's going on with all of this if you don't start figuring this out quick because new payment systems are coming they're already here they're already being adopted and if you own a similar cryptocurrency that is involved in these payment systems then you might be a on the winning side of what's to come that's being built out right now all right so let's play this clip i want to see what cecilia skinsley bis innovation job i think standards obviously is a key feature here that in early days we agreed on the same standard preferably one service payment provider is allowed access in the country also gets access to other countries be patient let's payment so. market and ask themselves are we doing this for our citizens in a way that is safe is efficient, but also inclusive. It needs to work for everybody. Or is there a need for an overhaul of the infrastructures in a way that improve the meeting of these objectives? And I think standard features in any country going forward are infrastructures like a fast payment systems and digital ideas, digital IDs, identifications. And then on a global scale, we need to think about how to connect the countries. And in my personal view, to Figure out how to connect the countries, guys. This is really important, right? So most of these payment systems being built out on the XRP ledger by Ripple use APIs. And so it's very easy to integrate that into the current system that banks hold, right? They've already went out. They've like, hey, what are the problems banks are having? How can we upgrade these banks? What is it going to look like? And they went out and they built all of this technology, right? RippleNet, ODL, all of these different things that are going to help banks central banks move value at the speed of light for very low cost. I think there was like a 250 or $500 million payment or XRP payment or came out of escrow, went into Ripple wallet. That payment was charged, I think it was 0. 0.0002 cents or something like that to move all of that money. That is a payment system unlike anything we've ever had. And banks and central banks are looking at this. They're like, wow, I can move all of that value. I can move a billion dollars for under a dollar. Is that what we're dealing with here? That's exactly what we're dealing with here, guys. It's super important you start learning and understanding this stuff. And I know you are if you're watching all of my videos. So let's keep going. Choosing between costs and speed. I think costs is the most important thing to address. But if Cost is the most important thing to address, right? That's what I was just talking about. If we are on the public sector side manage to provide the private sector side with enough competition, I think it will both solve both things, push costs, but also have nothing against speed that will be improved as well. I think when it comes to priorities, I think corporates and financial institutions have in relative term already satisfactory rails. At least they have more choices while a real improvement could happen in person-to-person -person payments and person-to-business payments. And when it comes to wholesale CBDC, I think 
that could be a possible one of the solutions, but it's not the solution. It's not the objective that we get it to, to, to at any price. And I think there is a number of important steps that can be taken in the building blocks that has been outlined. And one first step could be for central banks to allow for broader access to their settlement systems and also longer opening up. I think standards, obviously, is a key feature here that we, at early days, agree on the same standard. And preferably that one payment service provider if that is allowed access in one country, it would also get access to operate in other countries. So being bold, being persistent and being patient, I think, are the things we have to be on both the public and the private side. I think it's building infrastructures that are the key feature for us on the public side to do, but also regulate and supervise the private sector in a way that meets the objectives that we want to achieve. So guys, this is from March of 2021. There's so much stuff that's been done since then, but I really want to show you that these were the conversations happening with the IMF, with the BIS at that time. And since that time, so much more has happened, guys. I've covered all of this stuff in my chats, but it's such an exciting time if you know where to look. If you know where to do your due diligence, you know where to dig, you start coming up with all of these amazing gems. And I'm just so excited about the future. I hope this opened your eyes. I hope me sharing some of this value is helping you grow as an individual. If you guys are learning or if you guys are growing in the space, what are you most passionate about? What are you buying right now? Please comment down below. I appreciate the help. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.